right there. <laughs> spooky. Welcome. It's a very spooky day. Today is Halloween day. And so I'm in a spooky mood. Uh, and of course, I'm the kind of guy who dresses up in a three-piece suit on Halloween because I don't know why. I just want three-piece suits back as part of like the world, man. That's all I want. Uh, today we're doing something cursed, as is only appropriate for Halloween. We are freelancing on film. What is freelancing, you might ask? It is where one takes one's lens, removes it from the camera body, and shoots through it at a distance, separated. You can shoot through it normal ways, which effectively makes it into a redonkulous macro lens, or you can invert and start to get all kinds of spooky things uh, on your pictures. I'm gonna do a little bit of both today. Uh, we're gonna grab some film, shoot some things, but at first, ugh, it's really hard to show what it looks like through the camera while I'm wandering around. I don't have a good way to like make this film camera into also a mirrorless video camera. So I just wanna give an example on the old tabletop here as to what this looks like so that you can get a feel of what I'm seeing when we go out shooting. So I have my very spooky spider donut, which I'm going to consume like sort of now, soon. I'm hungry. Uh, and I've got the camera with a 105 1.8 lens that just came back from a cleaning and a video camera. So I just want to show you what we're getting ourselves into. So give me just a brief moment while I get my poop in a group here. Uh, I'm not very good at this. If I start video recording and I grab my lens, you can see as soon as I roll the lens in front of the camera, you can start to see something. And I can focus and compose just by physically moving the lens forward or backward. So there's a little bit of donut, but it's only the bottom end. What do I want to do? I'll just shift that son of a bitch right up there. There's the spider head. Look how spooky he is. So as I move the lens around, as long as the lens has an image circle big enough, to project what I'm doing, you can actually see what I'm doing. Pretty cool. That's why I chose a longer lens like this, because I can get real macro and do some fun stuff. Um, you can see that I've got quite a lot of image, image circle here to play with. And as I shift, tilt, you start to see crazy effects going on. Kind of neat. Uh, that is in the macro mode, right? So that I I'm basically just putting a huge bellows between the camera and the lens, minus the bellows. And then if you flip the lens around, you tend to get more flaring and crazy weirdness when you flip it around, especially when things are further and further away. But it's pretty cool. So, like same distance there versus there, it's about the same. Pretty cool looking. Uh, anyway, now you've seen generally what I'm gonna see as we go wander around. We're gonna shoot this on black and white because why not? We're going for like an ethereal sort of stretched out, like weird aesthetic. Um, and then I'm probably gonna focus on trying to photograph spooky things because it's a spooky day, I'm in a spooky mood. So. That's free lensing, that's what we're doing. Um, let's do it. It feels really weird wandering around with the camera separate from the lens. It feels kind of wrong, actually. Uh, but that's okay. We'll just see what we see. We'll just shoot what we shoot. You know what I mean? Let's go. Come along. Cool. Right there. Travesty. So free lensing with the lens normal ways 
is a great way to shoot some macro. And if you free lens with it backwards ways, you can typically focus on stuff further away. Further away, further away. This is such a trip. I can't even tell you how weird it is. Right there. Now, if I stop down, it's gonna be much darker, but I'll get way more in focus like that. Right there. Kill to roll. It's almost done. Oh, I missed it. This was an 800, don't let me forget. Ready? That is so cool. Crazy. That far apart. <laughs> That's nuts. Pretty cool though. Okay, let's keep going. This technique is really well suited to uh, digital cameras. Because you can spray and pray with digital. Cool. Oh man, get a shot of the gas station. I shoot my gas stations at night. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> Banging. Oh, crushed it. Already. Sick. Let's put somewhere in the sun to load up the next one. I don't want to do it in the cold. Should we see if we can set something on fire? Too bad I just threw away all the trash. <laughs> Spooky. So when they tell you not to leave your camera like face up pointing at the sun, when you're outside wandering around whatever and you're like Psh, please who cares no it's a real thing if you have especially cloth a shutter on your camera you can burn right through those uh, this is a 105 1.8 so it's reasonably high magnification reasonably large area of glass and you'll be able to just burn right through stuff so something to consider it's a real thing Spooky. Snap one, then move so the sun's not on the camera. Do the same shot. That's a cool one. Right there. Nice. It's crazy how far away that is. It's ridiculous. Oh man, that's a lot of glass to get through. Right there, one, two. Oh, crushed it. That's a cool bottle, I might need one of those. Look at this guy, little skull and crossbones over there. He's cool. Well, I guess now that I'm finished freelancing. Might as well go have a look around. We did freelancing and I have the results. Spoiler alert, they're better than I thought, actually. Let's take a look. Ba, 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 ba. Okay, so
we knew from the beginning that freelancing was some cursed shit. And it is. This is the technique, this is the technique you would usually use <laughs> when you're using a digital camera because you can spray and pray and not worry about it so much. Doing it on film is essentially asking for trouble. First, I'm in like the last few frames of a roll of Ilford HP5. Honestly, it looks pretty good. It's doing the lens baby thing. If you're not familiar, pause the video, look up what lens baby is, because that is the aesthetic we're going for when we're free lensing, especially when we're not aiming for macro. Here's a great example. Like you've got this super crazy softness out here. The lens is wide open, and, which works for me in two different ways. One, it gives me that really shallow depth of field, which obviously I'm into. And two, when the lens is detached from the camera, the camera defaults to the widest aperture that it knows for a lens or for that lens. So when you pull the lens off the camera and you separate them, it assumes that the lens is wide open because it can't read it, so it is. So I'm metering actually correctly, which is cool. So uh, f1.8 free lens, this guy looks spooky as hell. If we gave him just a little bit of contrast, skaboosh. You start to get into like actually spooky, decent photo territory. This guy, I was a little spray and pray because I didn't know quite, it's, it's really hard to focus when you're freelancing like that. But like, you know, give yourself a little bit of extra exposure, a little bit of extra contrast, and you start to get these cute, spooky little photos. I'm into it. Um, the more, <laughs> the more you separate the lens from the camera, especially when the body itself is in the sun, the more exposure problems you're going to have because the sun is just nuking straight through onto your film. So some of these exposures are a little wonky, but again, like I'm achieving the spooky, wonky, free lensy effect. Like this looks like it could probably be the start of a horror movie. Like for sure, actually. So I'm into that. Um, yeah, like check this out. Check out what happens in this Bocalicious land over here. Just totally bonkers. I'm pretty sure, not 100% sure, but pretty sure that this lens doesn't do this when it's attached to the camera. It's an effect that's happening as I'm shifting and tilting the lens around. But it's cool. It does exactly what I was asking it to do. You know, like just, you can just play around with some of these. I don't have kids, so I don't need photos of a freaking tricycle, but like, I don't know, it's cute. This is less good because if you go back and look at the footage, I'm in the sun, facing into the sun, trying to photograph these flowers and just thermonuclear annihilation. There's just too much damn light. So there's nothing I can do about those. But I switch to a lower speed film stock. We switched from HP5, which is 400 speed, to Ilford Delta 100. And by losing that two stops of speed, ta-da, I'm starting to get actually photos here of these flowers. And like, I don't know that they're sharp. These almost look like they're lit by a flash. There's almost like a solarizing effect going on here, which I think is kind of cool. But like, you know, there's there's something there. There's, there's, there's pictures. And they're sort of soft and ethereal and strange, but that's, the point, that's what you're looking for, skaboosh. These are really tripping me out. So we're like, I think near that bridge and you can see these crazy like halos that are coming off of these really well lit branches against this black backdrop, which is what these are. These are the branches, but they're the halo, the bocaliciousness is shifted off to the side because of the way that I'm angling the lens. Just totally nuts. Now they're not very sharp or very good, but we're used to that. This guy's spooky as hell. I like this one probably because he's actually close to sharp, but everything else is doing some weird shit. And then I intentionally pulled this tree into the foreground so we could see less of the house and was able to keep him more or less in focus. Like for how long that lens is, 
wide open, detached from the camera. These are surprisingly good. These lights here show that crazy effect really well. There's one of these door shots, this one I think wants to be, wants to be cool. It's gonna take a little bit of love and some cleanup, but there's, there's something there. I really like how this light came together. I like how soft it is, how it's sharp sort of in the middle and it's soft bottom and top, especially up here. Love that sort of ethereal vibe. R for crop. There's like a, there's like a crop of this somewhere in here. You know, maybe something like that. And then burn down some of the foreground a little, something like that. I like that shot. I like coffee, duh. And uh, so I, okay, so non sequitur. Uh, <laughs> I gave that photo to Val at Val's workshop, the um, coffee shop slash barber shop. And he's like, hey man, that's really cool. How about you give me some more? And we'll trade haircuts for um, photos. And I'm like, sick. So now I've got a purpose for this. I actually have an entire show of coffee related work that I did years ago when I was first getting into piezography printing. So uh, I'm gonna trade him some of this stuff. Anyway, I'm gonna include this image, so we'll probably do a print of this because it's cool and it's like soft, but it's not soft. Um, I wonder if I can show. There's almost a way where I can show the rebate here, uh, which I may or may not be able to figure out. The, when you see a rebate that's sort of poorly exposed like this, it just means that I totally screwed the pooch on the exposure, which is like, duh, because I'm wide open uh, with the lens separated from the damn camera. And uh, you can see that I start screwing up the uh, whole composition because I can't see what I'm photographing. <laughs> that one's okay. That one's probably the one though. Both of those are kind of cool. Um, uh, if this was like a Parisian cafe, it would look a lot better, but because it's a sketchy seating area in an alley outside of like a fish and chips shop here, less so. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. That was actually kind of cool. This is like abstracted to the point of like, what in the hell is going on? So. I can kind of dig this, a little high contrast. You can't tell how like seedy and sort of gross it is uh, because it's abstracted to the point where it, it looks kind of cool. So that one's not terrible. Well, I'll probably hold on to that one. That one's too sharp, it's bad. Uh, nice try, I'm an action sports photographer. Nope. Look at these, look at this crazy rocket shit going on. That's just, cool uh yeah downtown i was, I was kind of going for the whole monte vista sign thing because it's like our whatever classic sign these turned out actually surprisingly well the no trespassing not bad i don't know that i have any use for them but they're cool there's alex looking decidedly homeless because <laughs> you can't see his face uh some macro shit right like Okay, it's not the sharpest. But like you give it a little bit of contrast, yeah, it starts to get there. Not terrible. You guess the point across like, okay, let's talk about sharpness. This is one of my continual rants. You don't need it. Quit worrying about your sharpness, man. Give me a feeling. This uh, has a feeling. It's not very interesting, but it's better than it would be if it was tech sharp. I don't even know what this is. That's the great thing about film. Like you do a thing, you shoot some stuff, and a, a number of days later, you're like, what in the hell? I don't even know what that was. We'd have to go back and look at the footage to see what I'm even photographing here. Oh, it's a skull. Oh, this is through that window. I know where I am. Okay, okay. Um, I should have got more of the top of the skull shape and less of the just bottom of the jawline. 
because it's so abstracted I can't I can't quite figure out what's going on here I'd have to crop this in order for it to start to make any sense to me because the, the, there's too much area left and right that's starting to get there more head would have given you that sort of bulbous shape of the skull and I think that would have been better than the way this turned out oh well contrast all that to like what a normal picture looks like here's a backlit tree I know it's a huge surprise to you but I'm into backlit trees so this is how I started that roll of HP5 um, just I went out in the morning and we had like this I don't know if it was fog or smoke or a mixture because we do there are a lot of fires in Flagstaff in the fall they're prescribed burns um, so the, sometimes that layer of fog slash smoke slash whatever will just settle on the ground uh, and it's really good light to photograph trees in so this is what the camera looks like with an actually sharp lens actually attached to the camera anyway so of these what would I print uh, filters, one star, <laughs> five photos. <laughs> That's okay. And they're all actually thematically somewhat similar. They're a little spooky. I'm going to, I'm going to crop these to include just a skosh of a black border for now, since that's kind of part of my vibe. Ooh, yeah. And let's just, let's just see what we're getting ourselves into. Let's see how overexposed this is actually. I'm curious. Library metadata. 60th of a second, is that what that says? Yeah. So this is actually only about, it's not even a full stop overexposed. So that's not terrible. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, look how grainy that is. I might, I might do something a little terrible and flip this cross upside down. Don't hate me if you're religious, but that would make this photo spooky as shit. Okay, we're gonna try it. Now, I'm terrible at Photoshop, so you can just tell me that right now, that's fine. Spooky. Oh God, Photoshop's enormous. So your shit Photoshop. <sighs> this is not going to go well. I can tell. I think I skewed it the wrong way, but that's the general idea. Um, the weird things that happen inside my head, guys. It's uh, that's this what it's like in here. I like it. I'm gonna say this as a copy though. Yeah, that's great. So, um, I think the first order of printing business is probably this guy. Um, because I know that I have a use for it. Uh, and I think I even know what size I need to print it at. More or less. Let's go make a print. Okay, so this is a show of coffee-related work that I did about a thousand million years ago, and I'm going to trade these, however many of them that Val wants, for haircuts and beard trims and coffee. The one that I think fits in the series least is this one with the barbed wire, so I'm going to pull this out and replace it with that image we just looked at. These are all super warm tone piezography prints, so that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, I can either reuse this same mat board and crop the image, or cut a new mat, because this image is two to three, and make it into a vertical frame, which is what I think I wanna do. So, um, yeah, it's just, uh, see, these pa this paper is Canson Rag Photographique, which is my house piezography paper. It's just so good. 
God, it's good. So I'm going to do a full warm piezography print on these, on that paper, and see if I can get a size that sort of fits. It's really not that interesting, but it's piezography, so it is kind of interesting. Okay, let's do it. Uh, seven by eight and a half. Eight and a half on the long edge. I think that'll, that'll still be good. Moose, you're doing great, buddy. Let's call it 10. Let's, let's let it get a little bigger. So we are going to do an eight and a half by 11, add an image. Let's see how that um, nozzle check turned out. Not great. I'll bring this out for you, uh, but we're going to do a head cleaning. It's hard to see. Mostly you see it out here. Like these guys, these gaps and this gap and that gap, not great. So uh, every week, basically the start of every week, which for me is Tuesdays, which is the day we record videos, I do head cleanings on the printers just to make sure that I, everybody's copacetic. And uh, so the first head cleaning on this printer for this week indicates it needs to be cleaned, so you clean it. And then you do another check, and then you clean it and you do another check. And sometimes you get to do it once and you're good. And sometimes you spend literally eight hours doing a cleaning, doing a check, doing a cleaning, doing a check. Let it sit. That's an important thing for these, at least for these older Epsons. You do a couple of head cleanings and at that point, you're just throwing away your money. So you wanna sit after you've done like three to five of them for a couple hours while the printer does, it's, like it's not doing anything, it just sits. And then you come back for another nozzle check and everything's fine again. I don't know how that works. It's magic. Sometimes you have to make a sacrifice to the printing gods. But uh, yeah, so that's what we're doing right now. I have no idea how many attempts this will take. <laughs> but the next one, that one just finished. So I'll have it run a confirmation for us. It took me many years, but I did finally network the printers. <laughs> So there's a server, which is called Mordor, and uh, it runs all three printers. And so I can network into that machine and run the printers from anywhere in the building, which is great. So it says it's finished with another check. Let's go look. Let's see about this one. Yikes. It's improving, but it's improving slowly. All you have to do is press print. Like, it's not like we're making a platinum print here. It's not handmade. I just want to press print, but you can't. You got to wait until the print head's clear. Make myself dizzy doing that. Punch in on that and call it a day.